All right, this is a mic check. This is my mic. Mic, mic, mic. All right, go ahead, Jess. This is Ronald. Hey, Ronald. Ronald, Ronald, Ronald. Mike and Ronald here. That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. What's up? Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to humans for bringing us in. Thanks to you for supporting the show. I'm Shane Raymer, and you're listening to That Sober Guy Podcast, where we talk about drugs, alcohol, recovery, and much more. Welcome, everyone, to the first TSG episode of 2019. We're going to have some fun today. Uh, I got the Jess joining us today. What's up, the Jess? How are you? What's up? How long has it been since you've been on the show? I feel like too long. It's been a little... uh, little long i haven't been invited back and so you know actually wait for the invite just waiting for the invite you actually have and we tried to set you up on a zoom call because we were in the other room (laughs) i was in my bedroom losers and uh we couldn't figure it out so yeah that was the last time we gave it a shot but it's good to have you back i'm glad you're here i know a lot of people listening out there well it's good to be back Shane. sure it is all right sure thing okay we got a, a little bit of a different format for this first uh, first episode of the new year. We're going to be uh, uh, talking about some 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 fun things, I guess. Just some notes, some crazy stuff that's going on in the last couple of weeks. Have a little fun with it. Mountain biking at 37. <laughs> uh, yeah, with a helmet. That's fun. <laughs> Back to the gym again. No <laughs> resolutions, though. We're going to let God work in 2019. Just kind of sit in the back of the bus and not try to drive it. I also want to talk about apologizing to Miss Apology. Uh, we'll get there. And then also, how about men buying a pregnancy test? How about you men out there? Have you ever had to oh buy a pregnancy God. test for your old lady or your young lady <laughs> or your lady? When or she whoever. actually just had the flu. That's all it was. I had a feeling that's all it was, but I had to buy a pregnancy test. <laughs> Anytime and I'm, I'm talk feeling about a little awkward, went. I got to have a pregnancy test. Yeah, that's not the first time that's happened. So I want to get into <laughs> that. Uh, the electric fireplace that I bought you for uh, Christmas. Wanted to talk a little bit about that. Okay, the old electric loving it. bill. Loving it. That's fun. And then uh, to top it off, I went for potatoes to the grocery store and I didn't get a cherry pie. And I just wanted to celebrate that. Woo. That big win. First big victory. win of 2019. Victory. A victory there. Victory over um, temptation. We're also in the second half of uh, the episode today. Uh, we're going to talk to Stephanie Sledge, and Stephanie is the founder of The Government Rag, which is an educational news website. She also works in the restaurant industry, uh, but the, that's a little bit about her. But the reason actually we had her on the show is um, is her son, uh, Tyler, has served over a year and a half in a Missouri uh, prison, and uh, after he received a felony for drinking and driving, um, had a long, extensive history of alcoholism. Uh, and some some legal issues, obviously, uh, it, that's what ended him uh, or that's what made him end up in prison. Uh, and now he's been clean and sober since December of 2017. He's about to get out of prison February 1st, which is just in a couple of weeks. So uh, uh, Stephanie shared a little bit about her story, uh, about her her struggles uh, dealing with Tyler and Tyler's own struggles. And uh, so we're going to talk to her a little bit later on. Uh, and it's really good to have her on. Before we do any of this. Um, be sure to check us out at that sober guy.com. You can also connect with us on Instagram at real that sober guy and uh, on Twitter at Shane Raymer. And then um, subscribe what, to the email, subscribe to the email. That's another uh, good point and right exciting there. Exciting email thing yeah, happening. We'll get into that a little bit because Jess is really taking that over and she's been doing a really good job on, on connecting with you guys out there. And uh, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, now, I want to mention this too. Every year, 23 million Americans are living with addiction. Uh, only about 3 million are actively seeking help and getting the help that they need. Uh, so I wanted to tell you about Heroes in Recovery. Uh, Heroes in Recovery has a simple mission to eliminate the social stigma that keeps people with addiction and mental health issues from seeking help. They also share stories of recovery for the purpose of encouragement and inspiration and they help to create an engaged sober community that empowers people to get involved, give back, and live healthy, active lives. 
Heroes in Recovery is here to break the stigma surrounding substance use and mental health issues and uh, help people start and strengthen their recovery. So do you have a story? I guess that's a question to ask. I know I've got to, uh, the opportunity to share my story with Heroes in Recovery. It was a, a really good thing. Heidi helped me do that at a foundations conference. Uh, I believe that was in Nashville. Uh, I'd encourage you to do the same. If you want to, uh, uh, you can go uh, to heroesinrecovery.com slash sober guy, uh, or you can call 833-81-SOBER. Uh, that's 833-81-SOBER. Uh, you can help bring truth and hope to the spotlight by sharing your own story. So once again, I encourage you to do that. Heroesinrecovery.com slash sober guy or call 833-81-SOBER. Uh, much love to Foundations Recovery Network, Heroes in Recovery. We're really happy to partner with those guys again uh, into the new year. And we're going to be at the Foundations Conference in San Diego in April. Jess, you're coming down too, right? Yes, can't wait. We'll it's be our favorite there. time. It is. It's a really good time. We we get to meet a lot of good people, interact with a lot of good people, and do a bunch of podcasts. So what more can you ask for there? Um, we have a live show coming up January 20th. That's at the Hollywood Improv. We're super pumped about this. Uh, best-selling author Darren Prince is going to be there. Uh, Brandon Novak is going to be talking about his graphic novel uh, that recently was put out. And then John Hen uh, John Henson, you might remember him from Talk Soup back in the day. He's done, uh, also done a bunch of other work. He's going to be there. We're all going to be talking about recovery. We're going to be having a good time. Big shout out to Mark Saratella for, uh, for helping us put this together. We're really looking forward to that, and we'd love to see you there. If you go to thatsoberguy.com slash live shows, or you can go directly to the improv uh, website that's Hollywood Improv. I'm sorry, that's improv.com slash Hollywood. And uh, you can get the tickets there. All right. Am I missing anything? We got a new uh, human song coming in. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about that. This uh, for the new new intro. So much love to those guys for uh, for allowing us to rock some humans music on the intro and outro of that sober guy. Um, one thing I wanted to get to as well is a new uh, iTunes review. I, I checked, checked in on there today and looked in and said, um, great podcast. It's a five-star review, which we appreciate. Um, comes from lash from space it says, I enjoy waking up to this podcast. I would enjoy hearing an episode on anger in early recovery. Episode 79 touches on it for anyone looking for the topic of anger. Uh, so once again, we appreciate that. If you haven't left us a review on iTunes, you can go to iTunes and do so. We appreciate it. Anger. Um, maybe we should start there, Jess. What do you think about anger? I know both of us have <laughs> dealt with it. I had to deal with some anger, as a matter of fact, earlier this week. And I've already apologized for you to that. We're not going to air all of our dirty laundry on the show, are we? But uh, you know I love you, and we struggle with it, plain and simple. Yes. My name is Jessica, <laughs> and I'm in recovery for anger, if we're going there, that's happening. My name is Shane. Oh, man. Yeah, I've anger, been yes. in a 12-step study for anger and codependency and resentments and- All kinds and, of stuff, huh? I'm just kidding. All kinds of fun stuff, and this, and cherry pies. <laughs> yeah. But it's been good. It's been good. Yeah. You know, not fully healed or like, you know, this amazing revelation, but definitely tools to help along the way and uh, definitely stepping out of denial and mm. being honest with myself in this phase of life. And can you scoot up on the mic just a little bit? Hello. There you go. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's been it's been good. It's given me a lot of tools and um you know, a lot of grace and, um, yeah. Well, one thing that I heard tonight in group, so we're, we're actually just coming fresh off as we record this. We just had our Monday night celebrate recovery meeting. Uh, I sat in on the life issues group tonight, which was good. All the homies in there. What's up to you guys. If anyone listens to the show, um, one of the things that came up is we discussed a little bit about, obsessive compulsiveness and having things all arranged in a certain way. And when it doesn't go your way, you get angry in relation to, to anger. And the first thing I thought about was going back to the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, when it talks about the alcoholic or the person who suffers with anger or whatever it is, whatever you want to label it, um, is like the actor in their own play. And not only are they the actor, I don't remember the, the verbiage verbatim and I'm not going to look it up right now cause I'm too 
too damn lazy to, but uh, it, it mentions not only am I the actor, I'm also the producer, I'm the stagehand, I am uh, the, you know, what else, what else is in a play? Um, a tree. Uh, 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 wardrobe <laughs> assistant. Wardrobe assistant. <laughs> okay, basically, I don't, I don't know, but every I single know, part of the play, that's who I am, and I'm trying to control every aspect of it, and I thought about it mm. as this kind of came to me, I said, damn, that's not what I need to be doing. I need to be in the audience. I need to be kicking back, watching everything, and just letting it roll the way it is. So uh, I know for me, the anger thing, the frustration when things don't go my way, it's definitely an issue that I'm constantly having to work on. Some days are better than others. Um, but I think that's kind of the point, right? Working on it. Yeah, I think I like that actually analogy about the play or whatever, because you do like when you let anger or control issues or whatever, get a hold of you, you really are trying to orchestrate everybody's role. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, you're, if you're in a family environment or a business environment or whatever, everybody has their role. Everybody has their gift. Everybody has their purpose there. Not everybody's the same. <clears throat> so if you're trying to yeah, if you're trying to play everybody's part and control everybody's thing, it's not going to work because that's not your specialty. You have a specialty in the family. You have a specialty in the business, you know, play yeah. off of that. And then, you know, and then and then the rest of the people in the family and everybody grows together. Know your role. Yeah. Know your role. Know your role. <laughs> I guess Robo. I should say too, <laughs> Miss Robo. <laughs> Miss Robo. Okay, that's, that's not going to be funny. I guess I should say, too, for those out there who are listening to the show for the first time, we are an item. We're a match. We're a couple. Oh, yeah. We're married. We're married. Two kids. Two kids. Two ki I got two kids. Two kids. And two kids. we've been married for 10 years and together for 15. And we can't have a conversation for more than six seconds without being interrupted. It's difficult. It is. But we also, you know, we struggle. We struggle with um, following through with stuff and... Um, you know, organization within the family. There's so much going on. We're here. We're there. We're serving. We're doing. We're blah. blah you know, it's just a lot. Life. Yeah. Well, and I. So let me back up a little bit. I kind of feel like I didn't give you a fair opportunity, and I should. What do you want to talk about? Do you have anything you want to touch on? Do you have like what's been up with you? You haven't been on the podcast in a while. Um, I know a lot's gone on since last time because it's been months, maybe over a year, I think. Uh, anything you want to share, talk about? Well, anything? I would like to make What's an been announcement. Going on in the Jess life. I would like to make an announcement that Shane Raymer completed his hmm. schooling. Okay, this isn't supposed to be about me, though. This is supposed to be about well, you, I know, but, but thank I just, you. I, I appreciate wanted to that. make that announcement somewhere in there. Okay. And since I've got the mic right now, I just want to make that known I did, that and I appreciate you accomplished it. that. And five years ago, who knows if that yeah. would have gone down like that. And be so, average. Be average. No, be big, average. no big deal. His no big first 3.0. Had Fs and Ds all in my prior school. So <laughs> B average is pretty dang, pretty dang good. It's pretty awesome. So thank yay. you. Yay. If we had a little button with the... Crowd ding, 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 applause ding, 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 ding. thing. Oh, really? I can I can That's edit funny. it in later, I was but I probably the, won't because I'm lazy. Like fam like um, crowd cheering, like Family ah. Feud. Yeah, I like Family Feud. And it's weird that you were thinking ding 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 ding. <laughs> like That's, a winner, just, we're like different. a winner. <laughs> That's a good point. We're different. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah. So I don't know. Let's see what's been going on. Yeah, I've been in a twelve step, so I've been going to um, celebrate recovery with Shane. And that has been really cool. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's been helping. It's been giving me tools. I um, wasn't sure. I knew I needed something. Wasn't sure what I needed. And then Shane um, offered, you know, hey, why don't you come to Celebrate Recovery? And I really didn't think that there was a place for me there because I really thought that, um, because I was uninformed, I thought that it was, you know, alcohol and drug addiction. It's funny how many times we hear that in CR too. Yeah. Like I've heard it over and over. I didn't really think I needed this, my husband or my wife or somebody, but right. like it's for everybody. Right. So. Don't nobody ha know how to do life. No, no, there's no <laughs> manual. I actually just saw this funny thing on um, Instagram that said, no, life does not come with a manual. That's why we have moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, Word. Yes, love yes, you, mom. Yes, yes. Uh, I was talking about myself, but I love you too, Dars. <laughs> wow. 
Um, <gasps> anyway, uh, yeah, I, um, I'll be the manual for this family. Thank you. All right. You are the manual. Man, Emmanuel. Yes. All right. So you are though for real. I um, you. I so yeah. So I started going, I and <laughs> when I uh, uh, and then before I knew it, a step study opened up. So that was kind of a cool little way that that happened, and um joined that and so what is a step study maybe just in case somebody doesn't know so it's the 12 steps um you know just kind of working through the issues like why am i angry why am i codependent why you know do i have control issues like whatever it is um just kind of getting to the root of everything it's a lot of like book work and i'm not a lot but it's a good you know a good amount daily you're putting in some work for sure you're putting in some work and some time yeah and um it's been an eight month process and we're up on the, you know, eighth month now. So we graduate on the 28th of January and, um, I was asked to read my testimonies. Woo-hoo! Yeah. <laughs> so that's that going to be a like stretch. It's funny how you didn't think that you wanted to do that either. And then they asked you and you're like, okay. Yeah. That's I came neat. home and was like, I don't want to do I'm this graduation thing. It's weird how, you know, you just kind of don't feel worthy or you just, and, you know, I'm expecting to come out of this step study, you know, fresh spanking, new, shiny and bright, all fixed. And that's not the case, you know. I mean, doesn't life, work like that. Huh? No, it's I know that in the future I'm going to be doing another one. Like, that's just kind of how that works. And I don't know what I'll be doing it, you know, for or on or whatever. But I do know that every individual in the world should um, do one in their life because it is literally uh, just really a cool kind of understanding of you know who you are who other people are accepting other people for who they are um forgiveness and it's just a lot a lot of cool a lot of cool things come out of it so i'm grateful i'm grateful for it well i'm very proud of you and i'm ready to hear the testimony too i'm pretty pumped on that are you nervous i am yeah i can see i'm nervous but i know that there's you know there's people there that need to hear and yeah, that's just what I'm doing. It's not about me. It's not about, you know, even my testimony. It's just about, you know, people that are there that need to hear it. Just like this podcast. What else is that? What's up with the mom life? How's the mom life? Um. Well, I was sick with like vertigo for yeah, the last week, so which crazy. I don't even want to tell you. It's like you're drunk, but you don't get the drunk fun part i'm drunk beautiful so it's like the like spinning like your brain is loose in your head it was insane yeah so the first week of the new year i was bedridden and that was rough and um so yeah so today i started my new year and got on the old bandwagon went back to the gym with the rest of them (laughs) how many people went to the gym this week you know what i'm getting back to the gym i'm gonna get i'm working out you know it i'm gonna do it no more what time's the spin class (laughs) let me hit that up oh man my ass is sore i just picture like this sweat band and his wife beater and he's all fat and like popping that spandex on popping that hemorrhoid back in his hole Ew, that's disgusting. <laughs> Got to push that bad boy oh, back up there. Oh, heck to the no. That is gross. Oh, yuck. I, lo- I love the kids, but they uh, they are definitely, it's a lot of work. And you do a phenomenal job. Yeah. And I think we do the best we can as a team. I get frustrated and be a big baby sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I just love you and I love all your attention and I want it all yeah, the time. Yeah, you do. Sorry. And it's not possible. I know. At this moment. I'm working on it. That's I'm why I'm in a step it. study. I'm also working on <laughs> trying to, uh, you know, figure that out and allot the time to all three of you. It's a tough job being a mom. I'll yeah. tell you that much. I will say, too, that I noticed that, you know, men and women are different and that, uh, you know, us as moms and women, we can take on a little more, you know, and we, we kind of have like a more of a capacity of you know patience yeah or That's like kid sure. noise, noise you know like Dude, I'm like, i can't do the kid noise yeah i'm like okay i know that this noise is happening i'm doing this but i know that there's going to be an end because i'm going to get them on to the next thing and then that will be when this time comes and it's like every the whole day comes in blocks you know blocks 
of, you know, now we're doing this. Now we're doing that. Now we're going to do that. And I'm like, I know this noise is going on. And if I have to hear it for eight more seconds, I'm going to climb up on the top of the roof and jump off head first. That's right. how I feel. Right. And I think that that's true for a lot of men and women. I was talking to a friend of ours about it because she actually was saying that her husband was the same because, you know, the week after Christmas, dudes are off, you know, some people, if they're, you know, whatever, they, they're off for like a week or whatever. Yeah. So she was telling me he's off for a week and oh, I'm going insane. And it's, it's just not, it's not healthy for him to be home and like all up in the biz and like whatever. And he's <laughs> telling the kids like, what's that over there? And what's happening over here? And she's like, this is how we flow, you know? And like, when you get home from work, it's all good. You don't even know any of it happened you know yeah that's and how so, we like it yeah so she said um something funny she was like you know they had it right back in the day when the men would leave to go hunt and mm, for like you know a month at a time or something for the food for the family and then the women would stay home and like keep house and tend to the children and do the thing and then the men would come home with the meat and the whatever and <laughs> and then they'd go back out you know <laughs> and i'm like that is really funny because yeah you know it's it's sometimes it's hard co coinciding you, you know okay okay um so how about you're 100 percent right i was gonna switch gears but i'm not because i think that is well, I'm, I'm trying to find the word for that then i keep going back to natural or human what is the word of, of for that for what Just primal like men and- primal oh, the primal yeah. like uh-huh. that's how instinct. we're why instinct that's yeah. what i'm looking for that's the instinct yeah. Of it and men, yeah. right? We're not designed to hear a bunch of noise go like you guys can, you, you ladies, you can do like eight things at once, yeah. We really can, and it's take incredible. it's amazing, <laughs> it's 100% it's amazing. It's literally incredible sometimes when and I think about it. I don't I do. understand it, yeah, and I can't handle it, yeah, and that's but, and that's okay. That's okay. We're in a step, there's a study. group for that, there's a group for that. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't get tired of saying, or I probably won't. Uh, I mean, what's, what's, you know, what's fun that. if you don't poke fun at stuff a little bit, you know, no, it's good. I mean, it's all, laugh. it's like, good. It's good. We, it's good. It's good. It's it really good. is good, but it's, you know, there's, yeah. I mean, here's the thing too, you know, it's like a couple of my friends and girls from my women's group and stuff like that are like, oh, okay, CR, like what's the deal? I'm, yeah, yeah, come, you know, whatever. And it is a little foreign. It's a little different, you know, when you first go to your first meeting or your first group there or whatever, because they at have, any group at that. Well, yeah, but this is, this is a little different because there is a format, you know, and after each share, it's like, Everybody says, thank you for sharing, you know, and it's kind of, it's a little weird, right? At first you're like, what? It's different why, at first, yeah. Why is it, what? This well, because our normal thing is to have a conversation with somebody. And a lot of us like to hear ourselves talk. Uh, hence, I do a podcast. Yeah. Just point being, though, is that you learn. It, it's really taught me to be a better listener. To yes. To like listen to me people. Too. And then, because it, it forces you to do that. You know, I got to sit back and understand. And then, you know, when it's over, if you have some time to cross talk or, you know, sh- talk after the meeting, then it's cool. But um, there is a purpose behind it. But it, you're right. It is a little bit weird at first. That was the that that was actually you're, you're right about that. The cross talk and stuff. That was another thing that, you know, I'd come home and be like, I don't understand. She's over there crying and nobody can even <laughs> hand her a tissue. You know, and no one can say to her like, hey, Let I've been cry. there. I've done that. Blah, blah, blah. And it took me a couple weeks to actually figure out that like it's okay to let someone have their feelings and not have to like jump in because sometimes when you do that, and guys, save them. yeah, and save them because first of all, I'm a codependent, so I'm all like, I'll save you. I know all, <laughs> I know you know all the right things. Doctor Phyllis, yeah. For those of you who don't know, Jess used to be when we used to get hammered back in the day. <laughs> Jess would be off in the corner consoling somebody, oh God, yes, and we called her Doctor Phyllis. Because she was there trying to fix the world's problems or hey, fix that person's problem. Hey, people come pro- to me. I'm, I'm just not, saying. I'm not downing you on it. I'm not talking talking <laughs> shit here or anything. I'm I'm literally saying, I mean, that's how your heart is. That's how your soul is. You're a great person like that. But it was comedy at the same time. Yeah. Especially because we'd be wasted. crazy about that is like, you know, after, so now that life is no longer. And now it's like, that was actually a gifting, you know? And so it's kind of crazy to see that that's what I was doing at the time at the time I just thought you know it was whatever but now I look at it and it's like oh that's actually I'm an encourager I'm you know I talk things out with people I'm you know Dude, that kind of I thing just, so I just it's got just a great idea so crazy to like see that play out what oh my gosh this is so amazing we should do a segment called Dr. Phyllis on here and oh have you God. on 
stop. And no, is that a bad idea? No, I mean I'll totally do it. <laughs> we should do. Do that you guys want to hear a Doctor Phyllis segment? That's what we want to know. Shoot us some feedback. Oh and my let gosh, us know. it would be like. Um, I don't know how we would do it, but Dr. let Laura. us know. We could use that. It app, would be great. That good talk app. It'd be fun. I'm. I. I mean, those. Yeah, those days were. But you did. Friend. But you. But you discovered a gift, though. Well, yeah, what we it was saying, just. I really yeah, it's just you, you know I can't help it. But anyway, the crosstalk and everything. So that was weird. And I was like, why can't we like console her? Why can't we whatever? And then after weeks of doing it, I figure I found out that, wow, it's really okay to let someone like feel, have their feelings, wait on it, let them work it out, you know, because even myself, I would cry in a group or I would, you know, have an emotion or something. And I, it was nice to just like work, to just follow through from beginning to end with it and not have to have someone come over and tell me it was going to be fine and blah, blah, blah. You know, it was, I don't know. Yeah. It, 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 there's structure and it's different in um, CR in the beginning, but it's for a purpose and yeah. it works, <laughs> yep. you know? Yeah. Connecting with people works no matter where it is that you do it. That's for one thing. That's for sure. Making connections, making community. Yeah. Having oh, other people. You know, yeah, for sure. Huge. You know, um, I feel like we talk about that a lot, but it's really the foundation. We get a lot of emails saying, how do I, how do I do this? How do I help this person? How do I stop? How do I, you know, how this, how that. Well, number one, we don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, you know, I can share what's worked for me and it's real simple. There's no magic formula. It's pretty much find some community, go to a meeting at least once a week. If you're in early recovery, once a day, if you can, um, and, uh, get a mentor, get a sponsor and start serving others. I mean, it's, it's, it really is that and, and work the steps if you can. Those are like the three or four, I can't remember how many I just said, three or four, somewhere around there, basic things that, uh, that'll, you know, and, and if you're willing to do that stuff, you're going to see some, uh, uh results. some, some results from that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to, you're going to see results if you do the work, if you're not willing to do the work, keep drinking. Or yeah. Keep I hear you say you it do, all the know? time. Like you, if you put the work in, you know, and, and now it's like, I know what that means and. It's definitely and it sucks sometimes. Right. I mean, yeah. I don't mean to like discourage anybody, no. but point being is it's work. Like you really got to dig yeah. and you, you got to show up, you know, you got to get out of your comfort zone and it's not, it's not easy all the time. But if, if I don't do that, I'm going to stay right where I'm at and I'm not going to grow. I'm not yeah. going to move on. And I don't want to do that. That's boring. I think that was my motivation for going when you suggested to go to CR and I was like, I don't know. But I, that was my motivation is that I was like, I don't like where I'm at right now. And I have seen my, I have seen that I've put in work in the past in certain things and I've seen results. And so I thought, well, I mean, I guess I'm going to give it a shot, yeah. you know, because I mean, what have I got to lose? So, you know, I was just tired of, of living, you know, dealing and living like I yeah. was. So have you, has it helped you to understand the way that uh, alcoholics or addicts or people who struggle with addiction think or do or anything about that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely given me a, like a, a heart for people that are stuck in their addictions because I do hear the stories a lot. I see like that. It's not just like, I'm just choosing to, well, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but I'm just going to choose to do this. You know, it's yeah. like, it's, they're in a, they're in a place, you yeah. know, like they're, they're like, this is happening. I don't want Sick to do this. Thoughts. Sick thoughts. <laughs> like, for I don't, real, I don't want to do it, mm -hmm. you know, and, but it's difficult for me to get out of it. So, um, yeah, it's all in your head, you know, it's a, it's a head game. Yeah. So what do you think of my new mountain bike? <laughs> I think it's cool. I like that you're doing that. <laughs> no, I really do. I think it's awesome. I mean, you're always trying new things. You're always yeah. stepping up the game, trying <laughs> Try new, new stuff. stuff. Yeah, we'll see if like, it sticks. Hit me old. up in March and let me know if I'm still riding it, but I'm really planning on it. Yeah. I'm really having a fun Let's time see. doing it. Let's go through the things. Let's see. One year it was boxing. I still want to do. You got some I, gloves and. I still have them and I still I, box. Yeah, I saw a heavy bag at um, Big Five for sixty nine dollars. Yeah, but we want one at Maximum Fitness, and for some reason they don't have one. Right, but you could get one out here, and Cash could even do it. I could. It's a good he idea. You would love that. But um, punch it! I'm gonna punch it really hard. Yeah, you need one. I do. What and else? Uh, let's see, it was boxing, and then it was. I do it all. I'm like a spin. I think you like. Did, that wasn't really a thing, though. Spin. 
cycling. I've taken a couple of spin classes. Yeah, that wasn't a thing. What was the others? Uh, swim. You tried swimming for a little while. Got some goggles. <laughs> got yourself some goggles. Jumped on it. Have... <laughs> Jumped on it. I really enjoyed pool. swimming. It is an amazing I went after it. Sport. Then I stopped. Yes. And then um, there was again. the BMX bike. I love BMX. Dude, I rode BMX back in the day at the track right, in know. Napa. Well, yes, I know. And then there was, well, there's always the skateboard. That oh, just dude, I still sk- I just skated at the skate park the other I know. day. Dude, I just like to do a lot of shit. I know that. And dude. now there's something. There was something else. Something. Oh, there's probably 10 more. Something else. But, um, and now the mountain thing. bike. It's my new thing. I got a helmet. He's like, I got a helmet. I'm checking out the mountain bike. He's like on the, every time, like. I found a oh my gosh, killer deal. Um, so researching, Craigslist. searching, looking, whatever. And then he texts me. I got the, and I, I knew. I was like, oh God, he's looking at something. What is it? And then he texts me. Uh, bet found this bike. What do you think? He sends me a picture. Like, I really even know what. I'm like, yeah, sick. He's like, yeah, do you, can I, can I get it or what? Like, are we cool with that? Like, what's it? I'm like, yeah, babe, of course. Cause I'm not going to say no to a 37 year old man to a dream riding a mountain bike with a helmet <laughs> and gears. I'm glad you wear a helmet. I'm surprised actually that you wear a helmet. I'm shredding the gnar down the trails. Oh, okay. Shred the gnar gnar. Don't want to hit a tree. Knock my noggin out. <laughs> get all shredded ah. out, bro. You know, I pina, totally blacked out, bro. Pina Adobe, I was hitting the trail. I was shredding down. I hit the sixth gear and just endoed right into the tree, bro. Almost <laughs> broke my neck. Super stellar. <laughs> but for real, you got to wear a helmet. You, I never wore a helmet either. Like I would doing. never wear a helmet. Dude, I used to ride, I used to do so much fun stuff. So who, who was I just, I, I posted that. I had a few uh, good comments from homies. I know Twig sent one up from Seattle and, uh, you know, Twigs was big into BMX in uh, back of the day. And I know he still rides, too, because he made the comment. And we were both saying, like, for a lot of dudes out there, we're so scared of either, number one, looking stupid or or, uh, you know, we feel like we're 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 too serious. We're too responsible. We don't do the shit that we used to love to do as kids anymore because we're too old or we got, we're too, we got too much stuff going yeah, on that crazy? and it's so no, I don't want to live that life. I don't care how old I am. If I can still skate, you know, at the skate park with cash, or I can still go ride a mountain bike or a BMX bike or hit the punching bag or whatever it is. Like, I don't care. I want to do that stuff. And if it's something new that, you know, no doubt there's some fear involved in trying something. You don't want to look stupid and whatever, but I'm like, screw it. Like I'm going yeah. all in. I just want to do it because it looks fun. And if it sticks for a week and I don't like it, then cool. And if I end up doing yeah. it forever, then awesome, you know, but I'm never going to stop not doing what I think looks fun or that I want to try because I'm scared of. Oh, indoor you know, soccer. That was oh, another man, one. Man, <laughs> that was a one nighter right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I still got to, as a matter of fact, I almost <laughs> hit Ryan song. up today and I said, <laughs> oh, never man, played a funny. day in his life. Dude, I, I hated soccer. <laughs> I hated soccer. I played baseball, basketball, golf. I mean, I played everything except soccer. It wasn't until Lucy started playing soccer that I was like, man, soccer is awesome. So I got this wild hair up my ass. I'm going to, there's indoor tonight. I'm going to go get some exercise. I went and bought some shin guards. Hey, babe, I'm going to get in on I the free a, game. Oh yeah. Or the, what is it called? <laughs> I don't know, but I was the only jackass out there wearing shin guards guards on an indoor <laughs> thing and i looked so th- that, back to the point i looked like an idiot oh, i had no clue but i'm an athletic dude according to our counselor from back in the day oh, by the way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a marriage counselor and every time she would talk to us every time we met with her she somehow would sneak in that you know shane Mary. he's he's got a very athletic build and i'd be like okay wait hold up what what's going on what's in here. I'm athletic. She was like what, Woo. 60, 70, 60, she 70. What, she was she probably like 50, in her fifties, maybe. Was she? But I, was but she? I do. Come on, I got an athletic build. I'm an yeah, athlete. You do. I play baseball. I play yeah. lots of sports. I do yeah, a lot babe. of shit. Yeah, totally. I could play soccer, but I shouldn't have wore the shin guards. And then he came home, that and was I was like, downfall. "How was it?" And he was like, "Oh, dude, I was so out of breath. <laughs> like five minutes I in, I felt like I smoked like a carton of cigarettes right <laughs> before. That was how bad it was. And I don't. I didn't smoke at the time." But uh, uh, Ryan and I are going to try to get out again. Okay. Yeah, All so. right. Are you going to ride Anyways, your mountain bike on? I might over there? ride my mountain bike with my helmet on. <laughs> it just reminds me of, uh, of this guards. is 40. I know. When that's he what goes through the, uh, the midlife and he. Well, they are, you know, does I feel the, like the, the cycling club and yeah. it's just so funny, but it's not, I'm not, I don't have I all the gear amazing. though. I don't have spandex. I think okay? it's great. 
<laughs> not going to rock any spandex. I think it's great. I think it's awesome that you're constantly going for it, trying new things. You keep me young. Let me just paint the picture really quick. I don't have spandex or cycling <laughs> shoes, okay? <laughs> I wear Vans. Boots. I wear Vans and a Santa Cruz sweater. I'm just trying to make myself feel cool right now so I don't Vans. look like a total Are loser. you supposed to wear like some kind of special shoe? That's exactly like. my point. I'm not going to do that, okay? Well, I mean, not the clip I'm cooler than that, damn it. Not like the clip-ins, but like something that's grippier. Vans work awesome for BMX, for mountain bike, for whatever it, it doesn't is. Doesn't even Van, have clip-in skating. pedals. No, it's it's legit. I'm having fun I'm with just it. Just gonna hop on my bike, bro. So back to the gym, though. Let's get there too. We're back to the gym. Uh, no New Year's resolutions, though. Not not that I'm against them. I just don't feel like for me. I just kind of feel like it's I'm setting myself up for failure. Yeah. So I just want to just say, hey, this is a new year. Do a new I'm things. diving in. I'm getting back on the track. You know, November and December, I always pack on about 10 or 15 pounds because oh, I just eat God, a bunch of shit. Too. And, um, so you know, unhealthy. with the fast and stuff that we're doing, it's, you know, it's Helping. helped a little bit to ease up on on that. And I feel I feel a lot better. I'll tell you that in, yeah, in I feel one pretty week. Good. So I'm getting there. I was like sick, I said, so. hit us up in March and let us know how it's oh, going. Oh, Lord, I know. Um, I don't have a resolution either so much. I did. A friend sent me a, something to try and it was called the 2020 20. So it was like 20 minutes of I got to check it out. I did it just this morning and it was awesome. It was 20 minutes of like sweat workout, 20 minutes of reflect reflections, so like journal, meditate. Um, that kind of thing. And then 20 minutes mm. of grow. So read, yeah, I remember you talking listen about to a podcast, whatever you're going to do. And then you can involve it in social media too. So 20 minutes in the morning of social media, 20 minutes lunch, like a check-in, and then 20 minutes um, later that evening, but never past seven. And so I thought that was kind of cool. So I'm going to try to do that. I did the 20, 20, 20 um, this morning, and that was really, it was cool actually, because 20 minutes, it goes by fast, but also... When you're working out, it's uh goes by kind of slow. <laughs> that yeah. was the slowest twenty minutes. But um I do have a word for the year and that's focus. Ooh. Yeah. I do focus. feel like I'm gonna focus. But it's not like focus on one thing, it's just focus on God and just kinda let him guide me. I'm not gonna I'm just gonna keep my eyes on him. I'm not gonna look over there, look over here, what's happening, what, what, what. It's like, okay, God, I know you've got this. Just show me where you want me. Just yeah, do good. what you need me to do. You know, so um that's kind of cool. I'm looking forward to this year. I think it's going to be a lot of learning and building. Yeah. I do too. I don't really know, actually, now, now that you said I don't really know what. I, I guess I haven't thought about it too much. Yeah. I just, I'm happy that it's a new year. Um, I'm happy to move into whatever, whatever's in store. I don't really know. Yeah. Like I, I, no, yeah, it's funny. I really haven't given it a lot of thought. I know I enjoyed a couple weeks off. I, that's for sure. That was much needed. Yeah. I'm glad school's done. Can check that off. Yeah, that's good. You know, and get uh, there's just so much on Step our plate. Step studies almost last, over. Yeah, that's almost. We're kind of going too. into the new year with less, so that's really cool. Yeah. You know, we finished off a lot of stuff in yeah, this we had last a, year. Really busy at the end of the year. Yeah, going really, into really it was crazy. I looked at my my calendar for February, and it was like we have nothing. And I'm like, oh yeah. lord, okay, that's really cool. I'm glad right, we'll about that. We'll see how that. long that lasts. I know, but it's it's nice to not have something every freaking weekend. And you but, know, one I I know one thing. You know, since we're on the the topic of what you know the new year might bring, whatever. I know one thing is I I really want to do um, a lot more live shows this year. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we kind of started them late last year and we did a couple of them and, you know, now we're kicking this one off in on the 20th, just in a couple of weeks here, um, you know, down in uh, at the improv and I'm super excited about that. And I hope that, you know, we continue to have opportunities um, where we can, we can do more live shows and maybe go around a little bit to different parts of, uh, you know, the state, or other states, like who knows? Ask, who knows? Like, do you want to have like, do you want to have like a like how we've been doing it? Journey. You want to do you know one every month there, or do you want to like travel around and do different ones? I, different. I'd places? like to. I want to get out and and I want to explore different places, uh, meet some different people. Um, you know, I think there's, I think there's a need for it. I think the way podcasts are are blowing up too. Like down in Los Angeles, the podcast that's like I just kind of found this out recently. 
um, the podcast community in Los Angeles is like where it's at. Like it's made a stake in the ground for that's like the hub of podcasts, like live podcasts. Hmm. Um, you know, like every, everyone's got a damn podcast now, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's, it's really, crazy because when you first started this podcast, up. you were like, and you know, I don't know if you said five years or what you said in the, you know, in you know, however many years, yep. this is going to be where it's at, you know, because when he first was like, I want to do a podcast. I was like, what the hell is a podcast? Yeah. Well, we knew you what know? a podcast was from Izzy. At least that's the only thing. I, and that well, was, it was music. music. Yeah. But then when you were listening to new man, then you were like, this is a podcast. Yeah. So then we were like, okay, that, okay. So we knew what a podcast was, but you know, I was like, okay, fine. Do a podcast. Whatever. And this was in 2013. And yeah. I mean, podcasts had been coming out since probably 2006 to 2008. Yeah, but not I think. like they but are now. No, that was and early, you, early days. You were like, this is going to be the new thing. It's going to be in cars. It's going to be. I really like, did see it, you know. Yeah. I really so did good. have a vision I, for it, which yeah, was I cool. Think it's good. I think it's good to step it up. I think it's good also to be intentional for the year. I think it's important to kind of visualize your year like what do you want it to be yeah how do you want it to go what are you looking forward to what do you you know like striving for i think it's important well and i and i really love to having you know buddy in my corner as a friend as a sponsor you know we have these conversations sometimes about the podcast and about that kind of stuff too and you know he's always one to remind me um that as long as I'm out there and I'm sharing my own experience, my own strength, my own hope, um, you know, talking with other people. That's what this is about. That's all it's about. All the other stuff is stuff, you know, podcasts, live shows, um, you know, fun, whatever it is, you know, what, and, and at the end of the day, you know, that's really what it's about is creating community, serving others, that kind of stuff. And uh, as long as I keep, my kind of eye on that. That's the core of what this is all about. Um, I really feel like the rest of the stuff will work itself out, you know, but at the same time, and this is another part of the conversation we have. Okay. So how do you take that? How do you take that concept and, and live by that? But how do you also have a strategy and have goals and have, um, you know, be intentional? Like you said, there has to be some sort of line in between, I think, because you have to have, yeah. you know, you got to be able to, uh, to set some goals for yourself too. Yeah, I think you can be intentional and have visions for the for the new year and that kind of thing, but you know, you don't have to like freak out about them. Yeah, you know, you don't have to be exactly. like crazy. And then like if they don't come to fruition in the you know well, the month the that you planned or whatever, yeah, it's yeah. like you know just have it. Yes, yeah, so you have to have some motivation and some inspiration and some vision behind what you're doing. You know, yeah, um, or else you have nothing. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I, I mean, I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good stuff though. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens. And then we, we have some other ideas. Um, we've talked with, uh, I actually had a really good conversation with Dave from dopey, um, a couple of weeks back and what a, what a great guy. He's, he's a really good dude. Um, been through a lot in 2018, you know, with Chris passing away, um, him and Megan and Bobby from the dictionary podcast, you know, they, they work together a bit sometimes and it's really cool just to be a part of the community and be able to reach out and and talk to other podcasters and then also people who listen to the show and are involved in the community like this this thing has really opened up so many doors oh for gosh. both of us yeah. it's just like insane how it's, many yeah. cool ass people we've oh met my gosh. um how, how many it's brought us out of any like you know um well it's it's pushed us beyond our comfort in some totally. you know things yeah and, but but we're willing so it's like yeah let's do that you know and, yeah and meet yeah and meeting these amazing people and going to the coolest places and like and and then all the while you're doing it because you're just you know like you said helping people and just you know doing a good thing yeah and it's just kind of well yeah been, we, and we <laughs> get both we get both sides of it too which is awesome in working with foundations because we get like I've learned so much in that aspect of it, not just the podcast sector or, or uh, interacting with people who listen to the show, uh, but like from the treatment perspective side of it too, and going to the conferences oh and working gosh. with people yeah. that are actually in the, in the totally. treatment uh, industry, mm -hmm. that's a whole nother side to it. So it's yeah, just, it's been a it really, is. really cool thing. And all of it started from stepping out and getting uncomfortable, 
Yeah. <laughs> like, I, and that goes back to what I was talking about earlier about, I never want to be in that position where I'm too scared to try something because I'm going to fail or whatever. Like I would have funny, never started the podcast. If totally I totally thinking that like, this is, this was one of those, this was the first thing that you like, you know, we were talking about like, you, you know, you've done the boxing, you've done the da da da. Like this was one of those things, you when know, I this got was, sober, this was the about, first right? thing yep. that you stepped out or, you know, that you were like, I'm going to try this, you know, and it stuck. And, you know, what I'm saying is like all the other ones, you know, there was kind of, oh, okay, we tried it, tried it, tried it. Yeah. You know, the boxing and the, um, I can still you know, throw whatever. a right, right cross real good. And my well, jab is hot. And okay. So you better watch cash it. And it's heck I know. Funny. Yeah. He, man, that dude puts his dukes up. He's so he's good. Funny. But I'm sorry. I, yeah, but, but you're, this podcast is the one thing that, you know, really that was, that was your first, um, you know, knee jerk where you were like, I'm going to try this, you know, and it really stuck. And that's when you kind of realize that, uh, you know, it's not, it's not you, you know? Yeah, I know. And you just keep going a little bit at a time. And, you know, before you know it, five years ago goes by and you're like, wow, what the hell just happened? Let's just keep going. Yeah. Um, you know, but Real quick, back to, to Dave and I's conversation, Dave from Dopey. Oh, and hopefully, if you haven't checked out Dopey uh, or a Dictionary podcast, uh, check both of those shows out. They're you know they're great, great communities, great people. Uh, but Dave and I really talked about how you know we both kind of have this vision for being able to do more live shows, like do a big conference, do a big or, or not a conference, but but like a um, I don't I don't want to necessarily say a festival but yeah. something like that i saw a graphic Dude, the other day i've been day having vision from, for that for a long time well so brad williams is a, is a comic um maybe some of you are familiar with him and he posted this thing on instagram the other day and i guess it was from an artist that he is connected with and it said it was called podcella and it was like three oh. dates april 13th 14th and 15th and each day had a lineup and i got all excited what? i went oh man and i and i i messaged him i said man is this is this real? Like, how do I get on this? I want to be a part and, and talk, you know, represent sober community. And, and he goes, man, he goes, I wish it was real. He goes, it's just a, a graphic. And I said, well, bro, let, let's start it. Like, how do we do it? Yeah. You know? And so those are the types of things that are like going through my brain. Like, yeah, how do we that. do like this big, this big ass festival? And, yeah. and what Dave and I finally came back to is we have all the ideas, you know, we have, we, we have all these connections and we, we know a lot of great people who would love to be involved in something like this, but what does it all come down to? How do how do you finance something yeah. like that? How do you even get that off of the yeah, ground? And totally. so, you know, speaking of 2019, I'm kind of speaking this out. These are some of the visions and, and thoughts and ideas and stuff that, you know, I, I would really love to see come to fruition. And if anyone out there listening knows how the hell to do it, hit yeah. me up and let's, let's talk about it. You know, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, lots of good yeah, stuff. I so, that. um, I think there's a need for that, you know. It's it's coming. There's I know it's coming. The... It is, but it's just a matter of you know the who, what, yeah. when, why, where, where, where does it start? You know, too much of the festivals where it's you know based around alcohol and drugs and that kind of thing, you know, and and they're so fun. You can still go and be sober and do your thing, but um, it'd be cool for it not to be. Based well, around well, that, well, e- but even what I'm saying though is even just that, like like a Podcella thing would be. You have all different types of topics of people. So oh, you're going to yeah. have people yeah, there who are talking cool. about drugs and yeah. who drink and whatever. But let's have somebody there, too, who talks about sobriety. You have a whole God, bunch Shella, of different mix funny. of people coming together, you know, to to be there because they love podcasts and yeah. people learn from each other and they meet new people. I mean, would it I'd be fucking amazing. Like that would yeah. be an amazing thing to uh, to, to be a part of. That would be very um, cool. That let's talk. Cool. Let's talk about me having to buy a pregnancy test now. Oh lord! I mean, it's not the first time I've had to do it, but I noticed as I was walking through uh, Walmart of all places. I fucking what? hate. I can't going believe you went to place. Walmart. I can't either, but it was the closest place, and I had to walk in there. And so I went. I went right to the back where the uh, we are too good for are. Walmart. <laughs> I can't believe I am you went too there. highly respectable to walk into a Walmart. <laughs> Did anyone see you? You will never catch me dead in a Walmart. <laughs> oh my God. It's not what I meant. No, I just I hate going in there because I, I don't know why. They represent. I, just, I don't know. Yeah, it's like whatever. It's a whole different. Well, topic. It is also just no kind offense of to anybody who goes to Walmart. We've been to Walmart oh, plenty yeah, of times and I, and I still go in there. Yes, so I'm not absolutely. saying that I, I don't have vibe for it, but there's, there's definitely a vibe. The fruit goes bad in like a day and a half oh, yeah. and it pisses me don't off. Don't buy the meat. Yeah. Um, you know, Dry so goods. whole different story. I don't want to get sued by Walmart here, but 
Um, not that I'm important enough to get sued by Walmart either, but just thought it sounded cool, right? Sounded cool. I don't want to get sued by Walmart. <laughs> I'm fucking cool. That would suck. Um, anyways, Walmart, I love you. Okay. I went there. You supplied our pregnancy test. Thank you very much. <laughs> My wife is not pregnant. My wife Hallelujah. is not, I repeat, not pregnant. Good Lord. But, you know, you were sick as shit. And I, I went in and, and I said, you're not pregnant. And you said, go buy me a pregnancy test. And I went, okay. And I've done that like at least three times. And tampons. I've bought cash. tampons many a times. Oh, yeah, and let me tell you what I say when I walk up to the register <laughs> on this one. And this is not a joke. <laughs> I look the, the cashier dead in the eyes as I'm passing <laughs> over the tampons. And I simply ask him or her, do you think they will fit? Oh, my God. No, you don't. Do you <laughs> yes, really? Do. Oh, that's disgusting. Why don't do you just you do self-checkout and just, you know, modestly that's not fun. There's no bag fun it on in up that. there, buddy. Well, this time, this Pay time, this time the pregnancy test, I did do self-checkout. But I did notice that when I took the pregnant, as I was walking through the store, I was kind of trying to hide the <laughs> test like on the side of my that's leg. That's crazy that you would... That you want to hide a pregnancy test, but you don't yeah. want to hide tampons. I know I kind of hide the tampons too, but the <laughs> fact of asking the person if they think they'll fit is is hilarious to oh, me. Oh my gosh! Um, but the pregnancy test, yeah, I kind of hit it, and I, I think I bought that, and I think I bought. Now, what is the purpose drink. of hiding the pregnancy test? I don't what do you know? It was weird. I wasn't like. What's happening? I don't know. That that's what that's kind of why like, I wanted to bring it up. For it my was girlfriend. Weird. Yeah, it was really <laughs> odd. Like I'm I'm a man. And there's no, when my wife there's is no like physical way kids. I could ever be pregnant, <laughs> but I'm buying a pregnancy test. Oh my Lord. But like, does everybody know that I'm buying this for my wife or do they think that maybe like I'm buying a pregnancy test because you're I like putting it in front of the cashier with your ring finger hand. You're like, <laughs> and we'll take one of, you these. know, this is not for me. Correct. <laughs> I am married with two children. You know that it's physically impossible for me to be pregnant, right? You know, my wife's at home. She has vertigo. She says she's pregnant, but she's not. We do this all the time. Could you just ring me up? I can get the hell out of here. All right. I hope to God she's not pregnant. That's really what was going through my mind. <laughs> He's like crying. Please, no, God, no. Ring it up. Just do what it. What will we name it? Damn it. <laughs> Satan. <laughs> What? I'm oh kidding. Oh, my gosh. Stop. I'm kidding. I love the kids. It's just, it's chaos oh, sometimes. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, you are the man with the master plan when it comes to buying your wife emergency items when in need. What else? Tampons, uh, pregnancy tests. I think that's I'll buy you whatever, babe. I the love maximum. You. I'll buy you whatever, babe. You, you really do. You're pretty awesome about that. I always think about that too. I'm like, man, what? I wonder if all dudes do that. And if you don't, you should. Because, you know, if you really love your chick, then really let her know by you know, buying her tampons or even a pregnancy test. <laughs> I don't recommend it. It's not <laughs> Wrap them up for Christmas and be like, here, babe, <laughs> bought you these. She's How about like, that oh, video? It's a little box. What is it? How about that Christmas video of the, uh, there was a guy, it was going around on Twitter. Josh sent it to me and a little, he's little. Little box. Oh God! Don't. <laughs> it makes, I hate that. SMA, SMRA it or whatever those things. That's so weird. It's the weirdest thing. Uh, but there was a video floating around in this dude. He, he bought his, his girl. Uh, she had like three beautifully wrapped Christmas presents and he's oh, filming God. it and she opens the first one and she's all excited and giddy and she opens it up and takes it out and it's like an index card and on it it says light bill and he goes, see, I paid your light bill all year. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Mer oh, Merry Christmas. And she's looking at him like, I thought he was about to get slapped. He opened another one. It was, it was a car bill. <laughs> yeah. The car note. Now you, oh, and the phone bill. Now you can call all your bald headed friends <laughs> and, and tell let them know, tell Christmas. them what you got for Christmas. <laughs> that Merry Christmas. <laughs> I wish I had the title of it. I'll try that to put it in the show funny, notes, but, but it she is was hilarious. Pissed. She's like, oh, no, I better not be opening this other box. Of being that. Oh, but uh -uh. is, but is that not a gift all bill. year? Is that not a gift? There uh, was the a gift funny that keeps on giving Instagram year round? picture that had like bows all over like the faucet, the fridge, the, oh, you know, wow. whatever. And it was telling the kids like, um, <laughs> this is what I got you for Christmas. You yeah. know, it's a good it's pretty, point. It's a good yeah. point. We, you know, we, we fail to recognize those things. I mean, it's our job. It's what we do. It is. You know, we got to make our kids. We got to keep our kids alive and, um, you know, do our best to make them a substantial ish esque community member. Yes, member we of do. The community. And, you know, I'm pretty sure we're failing, but <laughs> <laughs> we're doing the we're best. We're failing we know miserably. 
Dude, oh, for, Lord. We, sometimes we feel, yeah, sometimes definitely feel like that. But hey, we're doing the best we can. Yeah. We we're really doing are. the best we can. We're doing what we can do. And that's all we can do. And and we got to give people. ourselves grace, too. You know, little people. Little pecs, as I like to call them. Gang of pecs. Yeah. Anything else we got going on tonight besides the fact that I didn't buy a cherry pie when I went to get potatoes the other night? Um, cherry pie free. That's right. What else? What? Got some new stickers in and, and some coffee mugs still if you want one of those. Hit me up on Instagram, at Real That Sober Guy. Uh, we, can, we can ship some of those out, including shipping for $15. I like the um the green ones. They look good. Yeah. Drinking is for pussies. Yeah. I got a little flack from somebody on that today. <gasps> Why? What'd they say? He's just taking it really serious, like really literal. Like I was calling him a pussy or something, and it sounded really like a personal what did problem he, to me. What? Oh, my I gosh. Wanna, I actually know crazy. him. I don't want to bust him out. He's a good dude. But you dude, know, the way that I look at that is I thought it was motivating. Either and he's like, it's you, not motivating to me. And I said, well, oh, I'm not. Oh, well, sorry. Like, you know. Well, it's not. I don't. I wouldn't look at it as motivating, but I would say that you drink because you don't well and this isn't everyone but i'm saying if you have an issue or you know with alcohol or whatever it's like you drink or you drug or you eat or whatever because you don't want to deal with the problems that are making you do those things so that's kind of a weak mentality you know that's it's, how it, i look that's, at it that's exactly somewhat of the point that's what i'm that saying, st- like, saying. And, and, and having you know? a little fun too like right come on. right you it's, know so so here's what well, recovery I, you know, I knew when you made those that there was going to be issues and i well I'm that's good sometimes that, it you know, creates conversation but here, here's the good thing about recovery and this is what this teaches us i didn't i didn't act like a jerk i responded you know respectfully here's what i wanted to say let me mail you a sticker. You can slap it to your forehead and oh you can God. go in the nearest bar and order yourself a Cosmopolitan and you can sip it very slowly. That's what I wanted to say. Oh I didn't say that. Um, because I enjoy a good would, Cosmopolitan. Well, yeah, but he's a man. Okay. <laughs> but he, he is. He's a good dude. He's and a man. I, I know he's a good dude. And I don't know if it was something personal to him. You know, I, I, I was trying to understand his point. I thought Somebody he was taking you know? a little bit literally. Yeah. Somebody I know. Somebody who I, I'm not like a friend. Him. No, no, not like a friend oh. local. I've never met him in person. It's just somebody oh. I've been in some groups with. And yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a good dude. I'm not, you know, trying to badmouth him or anything, yeah. but he had his own opinion. He's entitled to that. I think drinking is for puss drinking is for pussies is a funny saying. And we have some stickers made up. If you want one, let me know. I'll send you some. Haters up. gonna hate. Just oh, to the Prizo. What else we got before we wrap this thing up? Um, We're going to get to Stephanie Sledge here in just a minute. You know, I don't know. I just think, um, I guess, uh, oh, you know, I do want to say to subscribe to the emails if you haven't yet, because we've got some fun things going on, some new things going out. We're starting up a little bit of a blog situation. Yes. Um, just trying to get a little more content, you know, out there besides the podcast, just, you know, a, kind of like a through the month, just sending uh, motivating things. We've got people telling their stories and kind of what helped them. We sent out like a survey and we've got a lot of responses back. And so we'll send one out like every month. It'll be a featured story, a featured person. And um, just talking about, you know, what their breaking point was, how they got sober, what helps them stay sober, um, that kind of thing. That's been fun. We've got a newsletter that comes out with like all the new things that are happening at TSG. And then, uh, like I said, um, you know, blog entries and stuff. And, uh, if you're interested and I'm kind of apprehensive to say this on air, but I, you know, if you're interested in, um, you know, uh, writing something for the blog or, you know, um, if you are a writer or a blogger, why are you, why are you apprehensive? I, because I'm wondering if we're just going to get blogged, like, you know, if, if they're going to get like so many entries, like all no, at one time. I don't, um, no, but they're welcomed. And if you are interested in, you know, submitting something, then that would be cool. Where do they send it and to? you can send it to, uh, the just at that sober that guy. Sober guy. I think, yeah. The is just, it? or yeah. is it sobriety? No, it's the just at that sober guy. Yeah, the Jess at that sober guy. So yeah, send it and then we can, um, you know, we'll check it out. We'll put it on the newsletter and it'll remain on the blog. And I think that you can find the blog at um, on the website under TSG News is yeah. what it's under. Yep. So We're, there's just kind of new stuff going on. And you're doing a really good job with that. And I appreciate it. I know, you know, people out there who are uh, connected 
and want to stay connected, what they want to share their story and stuff. They really appreciate it too. So I just want to say thank you for doing that. You're doing oh. a really good job. Well, I'm looking forward welcome. to the new email. I was, I was waiting for it. So I know for the new I'm year get on it. I was, We're I was back sick. in action. I was sick. Vertigo. Vertigo. 38 like year old, old vertigo. Yeah. Like what? Who gets <laughs> vertigo? What's happening? Where can, if anyone wants to hit you up on Instagram, yeah, the email we already gave out the Jess at that sober guy.com. Where else Jess? Uh, my, yeah, my Instagram is, uh, this is us. Uh, this is, is us. Is there a six? I don't uh, think so. I, don't know. I think you it's just, this is us. This but is yeah, us. You can yeah. do that. Definitely. Well, thank you for coming on. Yeah. Had thank fun. you. That was fun. I know. It was nice to be. Oh yeah. It's, this is us six one six. Oh, got it. I don't even know what that is. Not anything. It was just, they were like suggested that. Oh, okay. Great. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was nice to be back. I'm Good to have you. People. We're going to get to Stephanie Sledge now. Uh, once again, Stephanie is here. Uh, she's going to share some of her story um, and share some of her son's story who has battled alcohol uh, and drugs for uh, quite a while now. He's uh, in Missouri prison, and uh, he's going to be out on February 1st. She's going to talk a little bit about that, and uh, and we're going to hear from her right now so let's get to stephanie sledge all right we're talking with stephanie sledge and uh, stephanie is the founder of the government rag educational Alter alternative news website uh, she's an author independent researcher freelance writer and investigative journalist uh, stephanie's son tyler uh, has served over a year and a half in a missouri prison after receiving a felony for drinking and driving uh, tyler went through treatment uh, he's been clean and sober now since December uh, of 2017, and uh, he struggled for uh, quite a few years with alcoholism, and he's also had a long battle with the legal system, and he's getting out of prison February 1st, so just uh, just in a couple of weeks, and uh, we're going to talk to Stephanie today and hear a little bit about her story, her own struggles, uh, and her son uh, Tyler's struggles, and what they've been going through, and, and what uh, maybe some of us can do to help as Tyler gets his life back on track and gets out of prison and uh, starts working a recovery program and all that good stuff. So, uh, Stephanie, it's really great to have you on, uh, on the podcast today. I appreciate you taking some time with us. Oh, well, thank you very much, Shane. And I really appreciate being on the podcast and, um, I'd like to say hi to all of the audience and, uh, I'm looking forward to talking with you. Yeah. So, um, and, and I appreciate, you know, we, we kind of chatted a little bit before and I know that you've listened to the show before and, uh, you know, you're, you're doing your thing out in, uh, West Virginia, right? Is it West Virginia? Uh, yes. West Virginia. Yeah. What, so West Virginia, you know, spreading the word of, of sober guy and just the recovery community. Uh, it's really, it's really cool to see, um, you know, what's happening in the recovery community with technology and podcasts and, you know, people are combining them with, with programs and all kinds of neat stuff. Um, beyond that, you know, the, the reality of it is, is that uh, there's so many families out there that, uh, that, are, that are really uh, suffering and, and have been torn apart and are going through some pretty difficult things uh, and also are going through some, uh, some very triumphant things, I think, at the same time with, with some wins, too. And I think we're kind of going to get into both of those um, today. So maybe. I'm going to kind of hand it off to you and maybe give us a little background about yourself and then about, uh, about your son and, and how, uh, how this all kind of started. Okay. Well, um, my background really is, uh, uh, basically, like you said, I've spent several years of my life, um, being a journalist and a writer. Um, I do a lot of editing for several writers, actually all, all around the world. And, um, so that's been, it's brought a lot of joy to my life. Um, I've spent my entire life in the restaurant industry. So um, I, I graduated from college. Actually, I, grad, I graduated from college the same year that my son, Tyler, who we're going to be talking about, graduated from high school. So hmm. I was uh, late in the game with graduating from college. But, but um, I went to Northwest Missouri State University. And since then, I've been uh, working in the restaurant industry um, doing this on the side and and my son Tyler he is 28 now and <clears throat> he's he has struggled with uh, alcohol um, I always like to tell people that um, his alcoholism was learned in school hmm. and the reason why I, I, I feel that way is because 
um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of, of drinking or anything like that that he was brought up in. Um, my father was an alcoholic. He passed away when I was a nine. So Tyler never got to meet him. And I know people have told me in the past that, you know, alcoholism can also be genetic. Yeah. And so, you know, I have had some struggles with like my brother and, but uh, mostly, you know, my battle with um, learning about alcoholism um, has been from my son, Tyler. Wow. That's, that's crazy too. So, I mean, but actually it really does stem back for you just as a child, if you lost your father at nine to it, um, it's something that, that you've at least been aware of um, since you were a kid. Yeah, definitely. Um, my parents got divorced before he passed away and he passed away young. He was only, I think, 37. Mm. And he, he died as a result of Agent Orange cancer from the Vietnam War. But, but you know, my, my mother, um, you know, she, she had to divorce him because of his alcoholism. And, and I, I know that, you know, the stories that I've heard and such, you know, that he did battle with alcoholism you know, up until he died. And yeah. I also had a brother that got out of the military as well. Um, and he suffered from great alcoholism for, I mean, several years, almost to the point of, you know, of committing suicide before he finally um, reached out. And he's been clean now for several years. And I was really glad for him too. And But my son, Tyler, he struggled tremendously. And and, and, you know, I, it just has always broke my heart. He, he has done a lot of destructive damage to the family because of alcoholism. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very sad to see someone going to go down that road. It's, uh, it, it makes me feel good though, when I'm able to talk to someone, you know, that has been down that road and that there is a clear path, you know, when the person chooses to, um, yeah. to, to be clean, but you know, it's taken Tyler a long time he, to, to realize that. And, and so I am, I am looking forward to him getting out and starting his life over. And, you know, I know that he tells me, you know, whenever I speak to him on the phone, when he calls me from prison that, you know, he tells me that he doesn't, he doesn't ever want to go back to where he was. And, and, you know, he, before before he ended up in prison i mean he you know he his alcoholism was so bad that it it he did destroy a lot of relationships yeah so let, let's kind of dive into that i mean wh what what happened with tyler where did it start um where did it uh you know how, what did that road look like and then um you know where where did that end up obviously we know he's in prison he's about to get out pretty soon just in a, in a couple of weeks um but what was that what was that journey like um well first of all i just want to let your audience know that my son did give me permission to talk about him um you know he he is looking for recovery when he gets out he is looking forward to um actually the the prison that he's in, in is uh in missouri is a treatment facility prison and um he ha had applied to come out to west virginia because you know he he when he gets out of prison he has no place to go and none of his family lives in missouri anymore and um so you know it's been a long battle for him he um i i, I would say tyler started drinking when he was around 14 maybe 13 or 14 mm. and um it was a constant battle all through getting him through high school. He, uh, you know, just, uh, he hid drinking a lot. You know, it was, it was quite a long time before we realized that he had a serious problem. And, um, you know, his dad and I, we, we did confront Tyler many times. And, um, when Tyler was in high school, he did go to treatment, um, mm. for a while. And, um, you know, he, he had, he did go to AA for a while, but, he constantly kept going back to drinking and kept going back to the same friends that he had. And, and in my opinion, you know, I, I, I always tried to like, you know, his friends and such, but a lot of his friends were also in the same boat. You know, they, they, um, after they graduated from high school, you know, they would all continue to hang out together and, and, you know, that, that was all they did was just, you know, party till they were drunk and, 
Yeah. Um, some of them went down that road, very self-destructive. Uh, he's had, um, he's had, I think, two friends that killed themselves because they could not mm. stop drinking. The the bottle got so bad. But uh, you know, Tyler went from drinking, um, you know, as a social thing to drinking as a secret thing to hiding it to becoming very abusive. Um, to everybody around him. And the, and the sad thing was, is that, you know, people in the family became divided and scared of him because he would, you know, he chose to drink after a period of time. He, he chose to start drinking like vodka and, mm. and whiskey. And, and, you know, it, it, he would drink to the point where he would not be satisfied until he was completely smashed. And yeah. it was during those times where he would be really destructive. I mean, Tyler did spend a lot of time until, you know, I've, I had to, to throw him out um, of my house because of fear, you know, and, and he's done a lot of really bad things that I know he feels really bad about him now, but he did admit to me that he, the sad part for him is the fact that he doesn't remember a lot of things that he did. Mm -hmm. And it was because of the fact that, you know, he, why he would, he would drink till he wiped out his memory. Yeah. And, so I, you know, I never wanted to see Tyler go down the legal road that he went down. And, you know, I know that that's been a huge problem or I shouldn't say it's a huge problem. It's a constant, it was a constant problem at the time when he would keep using, I guess, as an excuse. Um, it's, it was, it became hard for me to have sympathy after a certain period of time where I myself had to be you know, I had to turn my back on Tyler because I didn't know what else to do. To do. Yeah. And, you know, I had family members that were confronting me about, you know, me always trying to caretake him or, you know, and this and that and how destructive it was. So, I mean, the family confronted me about the fact that I was in denial that, you know, he was not only destroying his life, but he was also destroying the whole family. Yeah. Well, and I think that's such a great point because for me, it, it um, well, I guess what I want to ask you is if you could elaborate a little bit more on that from a mother or a parent's perspective on, I mean, being down in the trenches like that, and my, and my, my kids are young, you know, but I can only imagine if that was my son, um, you know, how I would respond to, to, to that situation, having to deal with, with, uh, you know, some, some of the things that, um, you know, that go on in when, when someone's living that lifestyle and, and alcohol and drugs really can grab a hold of them. Um, I mean, what was that like for you? Can you, can you go into detail a little bit about that for maybe another mom or for a parent out there who's listening? And, and maybe even if you have any advice you could share as well. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I also, I have a total of five kids and my youngest is 21 and Tyler's my oldest. And, and so, you know, I, there's four boys and, and one girl. And so, you know, I did have other children too, that went through bouts of where, you know, they, they would get into high school and start drinking with friends and stuff. So, I mean, it was a constant thing all the time. And, but Tyler was the only one that took alcoholism. I mean, the, my other kids, like they, they can, you know, they're all adults now, but they can go out and drink responsibly and not yeah. get violent. And yeah. he, but you know, it was, it was really hard for me because, you know, I wanted to help him so much. I wanted him to clean up and I felt like I was just constantly not lecturing him, but constantly trying to get him to understand how bad his life was getting. Like mm. you know, he couldn't keep a job. His, uh, he couldn't keep a girlfriend, his, uh, you know, he, he would get so violent. He'd start, he'd break things. He, he'd do things irresponsibly. You know, he's wrecked his car many times. He's, uh, um, destroyed a lot of his relationships with friends. And I mean, a lot of his family members, you know, they, they tell me that, you know, the only way they're ever going to forgive Tyler for some of the things that they've done to him is, you know, he's going to have to prove himself and that's by staying clean and never going back to that way of life because you know he 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 did things that were he was very violent when he drank like i mean when i mean violent i mean like he would get drunk and you know he'd get up in your face and scream and and you know he he'd throw things break things he wouldn't have memories at all and so 
you know, he, he did, you know, his sister opened her doors to him one time when he was homeless and, and he did, he did lose everything he had. And that was a result of drinking. And there came a point where I had to say, no, you can't live with me. You know, I can't deal with it either anymore. And then he would make promises like I'm going to stay clean. And, you know, and then I would take him back in and, you know, and, and then he would secretly go back to be in that way of life until it just got so out of control that, you know, we had no choice but to turn our back. And that was what made me feel guilty. Like, I didn't want to turn my back on him. I, I don't want to turn my back on anybody that needs help. And I don't. But there gets to a point where, you know, if you're being the one that's being verbally, you know, abused or physically threatened and something, you you end up even as a mom having to make a choice where you're like, okay, I'm done. You're like, I'm done. And so yeah, yeah. I did have to I did have to turn my back on Tyler because of that, which it ended up as a result not not because it was my fault, but because he's the one that had to turn, see himself in the mirror, and that's where it's led him now. And and actually, I'm kind of grateful now because like he's, I mean he's he's a uh, you know, when I talk to him, you know, he, he's a whole different person. Like I haven't even heard this person for several years and yeah. talking to him now, even though he's in prison, his mind is so clear and he's such a loving person. You know, it's like a Tyler that I haven't known for years. Yeah. Which is probably refreshing for you, obviously to, uh, to get a piece of, uh, a piece of him back. I mean, uh, that's gotta be difficult seeing, your 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 child, um, not not themselves, I guess, and acting in in that in those ways that uh, you know that's not the type of person that they are. Um, what does his recovery program look like? I mean, do you know um, any of the details on on what are some of the things that he's been able to uh, to do while he's been inside? Um, yeah, I mean he he's in a leadership role right now in the treatment facility that he's at. He's you know, that, that made it through the treatment to the part where, you know, and Tyler's actually never made it through any treatment. Like he did go to treatment when he was younger, but he walked out the doors and, you know, but this time he tells me different things that I didn't really know a whole lot other than, you know, just listening to your podcast or talking to other people that have been down this road. But I mean, they took him through a, actually a lot of, um, confrontation, um, treatment and, and so like he's he's in a leadership role right now what he wants to do is uh he wants to come out here he's already has contacts out here the prison that he's in actually lets them make contacts um because he's going to be getting out he'll be on parole for a year um they have already allowed him to have contacts with people that are i guess they call them sponsors um that go to aa and um, so he is in contact already with people and they allow them to email each other. And so, you know, that makes me feel really good. And he's been offered a job when he gets out here and um, you know, he, he's looking forward to being clean. And, you know, I, I did, I did have some apprehensions, you know, like a, a couple of weeks ago, you know, I asked him, I was like, you know, when you walk out that door, you have nothing. Like you lost everything. You have everything, including the pair of shoes that you had. I mean, you know, he 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 literally has nothing. He lost everything he has. And and I said, you know, you can come out here and start over, which you know is a really great idea. And I'm glad that the um, you know that Missouri parole has given him a chance to leave the state because. Tyler has nothing there except for old, old playmates and playgrounds. Yeah. And there's nothing there for him. And, and, and I'm glad that he's been given a chance, you know, like he, he has things that are waiting for him. He's got people that want to help, help him and have are already offered him a job once he gets out here. And, you know, but I did, I did confront him a couple of weeks ago on the phone and, you know, we only, they only give us 15 minute blocks to talk whenever he's able to call. And, you know, I, I told him, you know, I was like, you know, I really need to know, you know, what you, what your plans are, you know? And I said, because, 
you know, you, you you just, you know, have you looked at yourself? Do you understand that you are an alcoholic? Do you understand that you can't ever go back, you know, to being the way that you were being that, you know, and how much hurrying you've done? And, and he, he broke down on the phone and told me that, you know, they did this thing in their treatment class where, you know, they had to basically talk about the things that they've done to people and how they've hurt people and, you know, how alcoholism has, has ruined their lives. And, and, you know, he told me some things that I didn't know. And, you know, he, he, he actually started crying on the phone and told me, he's like, mom, I, he's like, I, I just didn't realize, you know, how bad, how bad it was to look at myself. And he's like, I feel so bad. He's like, when I get out, I have a lot of apologies. And then I told him, I was like, you know, you have, the longer that you stay clean and every day that you stay clean is a way to also apologize to people. You know, it's about trusting you again. You know, it's, there's a lot of people in the family that are like, oh, well, God, Tyler's getting out of prison. Who cares? He's, you know, just going to go back to being an alcohol, alcoholic, you know, and, and, you know, I, I really don't uh, feel that way about him anymore because like I said, I, um, you know, it, it's like learning. It's like going back and finding out the son that I had at one time before he started drinking is back. Yeah. And that makes a big difference to me. Well, I, and I, I so I, I want to touch on a couple of things that you said that I think they're, that are important. So the first thing was, um, you mentioned, you know, that he has nothing in, in Missouri. He's got old friends and old playgrounds. And um, I think that's a, that's a great thing to recognize because I know at least for me in going through early recovery, one of the things that I had to do was get away from old situations, environments, people, places, things, all that stuff. And I really had to start over, which is another point that you made here. So I, I kind of feel like it's all about perspective for Tyler, for you, uh, for, for the whole thing is that, no, he doesn't have anything right out of, of prison, right? Here, here you're, you're going to get out. You have nothing, right? At the same time, you have the whole world of opportunity. So how do I take this opportunity and put it in a positive light that God's given me a second chance to now move forward and get out of some of those, um, you know, those environments, those people. And now I can start down this new path. Uh, I know you mentioned that, that he'd, he'd love to, uh, to stay sober, to start, uh, to start working, to start serving in the recovery community. Um, and I think that's awesome. And so I guess, you know, the, the third thing I wanted to, to kind of touch on and maybe uh, follow it up with a question for you is once he gets out, once he gets back home, um, what are some of the things that you guys are thinking about um, or, or, or are there things that you're looking into? Like what, what is kind of the plan? And I'm not putting you on the spot here by any means either. I'm just, I'm just curious, like the, the plan for recovery, is there, you know, meeting schedules? Um, you mentioned a sponsor that's such, man, that's been such a huge thing for me is when I got a sponsor, it, it really took my recovery to the next level and really allowed me to, um, you know, to start working the steps to do all the things that I need, need to do because recovery for me, it's not, um, you know, it's, it's not something that I, I do, um, you know, I guess half fast in a sense, it's, it's a lifestyle, I guess is what I'm saying. It's a day in and day out type of thing because it, it, it applies so much more to just not drinking and doing drugs. There's all kinds of things involved. And, uh, I know once I got plugged in, in the community into, you know, um, 12 step to church, all that kind of stuff. And I think that stuff would just be so crucial for Tyler. Um, you know, as I'm thinking about it, as he gets home, so number one, what are some of the things, I know this is kind of a long answer. I apologize. I do this shit sometimes, Stephanie, <laughs> but um, he, what, what, what are some of the things that you guys are thinking about? And then number two, I just want to offer this up. Like if, you know, I'll definitely send you my, my phone number. If Tyler needs to personally like text me, call me, like if he needs to like, Hey, where can I find some meetings? Like I'm here for that a hundred percent, you know, to do that. So I just wanted to throw that out there too. Oh, well, you know, and I've actually already talked to him about you and, and, um, his plan really, I guess our plan is, is, you know, I'm, I'm the only family member that he has out here. His, his brothers and sisters are now, you know, I mean, we've got a couple of them in college and in the Midwest and my daughter lives in St. Louis and, and so they're all spread out. Um, 
I'm the one that lives here in West Virginia and I'm giving him a chance to come out here and start over. However, you know, because of you know, I mean, I'm like everybody else, you know, I work and pay bills and I've got other children that I'm constantly helping as well to try to make it. And, um, I just recently was blessed with a, a grandson. And, um, nice. so my, my life is, you know, limited out here on what I can help with him. And that's why I've made it clear to him that, you know, I can help him with a launch pad. It'll be temporary you know, he can't live with me. He can stay with me for, you know, a short period of time until he can get his own place. But, you know, I've, I, he's got to be able to make it on his own, which is what our conversations yeah. have been about. And, and, um, Tyler did go to college and he's got a lot of technical background and, um, you know, his, because of his alcoholism, his, he hasn't been able to dive right into a career because he's always, you know, that's always been a, something that's destroyed any chance that he's ever had. And so he's talked to me about what his, you know, goals are and that's to implement what he's learned in college. And, and he was offered a job out here as a mechanic um, by somebody that's in the program here that said that when he gets out, if he can make it here, he'll give him a job. Yeah. And he's also in recovery. And I felt really good about that. In fact, I stopped by his auto shop a couple of weeks ago just to meet him and um, but he's been corresponding with Tyler by email um, because, like I said, the prison allows them to email. And he was able to get in contact with somebody in the AA program. I'm not sure how he did it, but I know that they have contacts or yeah. they're able to find ways to get them. And anyway, um, so his plan is to come out here. He needs he needs a, you know, he he already has. I went and talked to he'll be on parole and I hate to see him be on parole, but, you know, I mean, that's just another consequence for all this stuff. You know, thankfully it's only for a year, but you know, and, and then, you know, maybe I don't, you know, I, know. Well, I think, I, I think what you, what you're talking about though, too, is him, him, you know, um, being able to correspond to communicate with this other, um, this other guy who is part of AA, uh, he's maybe offering a job. So he's part of a program and that's going to be the biggest thing, um, you know, in when anybody is newly sober, and I can only speak from my own experience, the biggest thing for me was was getting locked in somewhere and making it a daily thing. I know one of the things that they recommended uh, when I got out of rehab was ninety and ninety, um, which I which I didn't I didn't exactly do ninety ninety, but I did close to it, and I, I tried my best to do as many meetings as I could. But what it is, it's ninety meetings in ninety days, so you're basically you need to go to one AA meeting every day. So you're, you're making that part of your routine. So, you know, you, you get up in the morning, you go to a meeting, you go to work, or you get up in the morning, you, you go to the gym, you go to work, and then on your way home, you stop and you do a meeting. That, that type of um, community and being involved in that is just so huge, um, you know, in, in being around other people who can build you up, who can help you understand some of the things that, um, you know, like for me, help, help me understand some of the things that I had been through and why I was acting the way I was acting and then step work and all that stuff, it all kind of falls together. And I think that if Tyler is willing to do that and he's willing to um, go to any lengths to, uh, you know, and to get plugged in and to stay plugged in and to make it a lifestyle, he's got a really, um, he's got a really, you know, bright future ahead in, in opportunities uh, where he can succeed and do the work that he wants to do and be the man that he wants to be and all that stuff. Uh, I'm really excited for him, to be honest with you. And, and I hope that he, uh, you know, I hope he gets out and he dives right into to this recovery thing and starts to learn more and, and about himself, which I'm sure he's been doing in the last year and a half as well. Um, but yeah. I, I know that's got to be tough as a, as a mom too. And I think it's cool that you're setting boundaries too. Um, you know, hey, like I can help you a launching pad, but you're not living here. I, I'm going to help you get get you on your way, and that's that's very that's very good of you, I think, to set those and be very clear about them right out of the gate. Well, I have to, and that's because of you know all the times that you know I, I've allowed Tyler to, um, you know, be I guess abusive to me. And, you know, I'm not one that really plays the role of a victim or anything like that. But what yeah. I can tell you is, is that, you know, it would be living, living with someone that is an alcoholic, even if they're your own child, it is, 
it is very scary when they're when they're beyond past the point where you feel like there's no return for them and and if that is the hardest thing and i am setting my boundaries because you know like i have goals for tyler but tyler's the one that has to succeed i can't live his life for him and you know i've explained that to him many times i'm like you know Tyler was fortunate. He didn't grow up in a house that had alcoholism. You know, yeah. I mean, we would, you know, his parents, we go out and have a drink sometimes out, out at like if we're going to go out to eat at a restaurant and stuff. But our kids didn't grow up in a house full of alcoholism. And, and you know, they didn't have drugs in the house and or any of that. So, you know, we felt like we were pretty good, responsible parents. And, and, but like you said, I mean, genetics is a part of it. And I always, I do joke around with people sometimes that, you know, I, I gave, I, I gave birth to my dad, you know, cause Tyler is a split image of my dad, including, mm. you know, his, <laughs> his behavior yeah. and alcoholism. And, yeah. and so, but he wants to be clean. The thing is, is that he's really happy right now that he's getting out. He's looking forward to it, but while he's in there, He's enjoying the fact that he's a leader too. And he, there's all yeah. these new people that are constantly being sent into prison and he is helping sponsor them. So even though he's been in prison and he's for, kind of forced to stay clean, you know, he's now priding himself now that he's got over a year clean. Yeah. And, and the, you know, the, the, the service aspect that you, that you just mentioned is huge. Uh, being of service, you know, alcoholism, addiction, it's such a selfish disease. Um, you know, when I'm in the midst of that, I'm extremely selfish and everything is about me. You know, what can I get out of this? Um, I'm only going to do something for somebody else if, uh, you know, if there's something in it for me. And like being in recovery is the complete opposite. And, and being of service like that for me is what really helps to keep me sober. And so if he's already getting a, a concept of that, uh, inside, uh, man, you take that and you apply it to the outside. And even if it just means, you know, one of the classic ones showing up at the AA meeting and they ask you to be the coffee maker, you know what I mean? Okay. My, my service for, you know, right now in, in the, in the early days is to show up and make coffee, you know, for that, that's all I got to do. I mean, but just starting, just that starting point of that is something that, that can really help propel, um, you know, to being, to being locked in, staying, staying locked in the community and, and, you know, on, on the right path. Yeah, and I, I'll be honest with you, too. I did something, I guess you'd consider it to be undercover, but um, I, when Tyler was first sent to prison, you know, and, and that was very hard for everybody in the family because nobody ever wanted to see him go there, you know. And, I mean, it, you know, it just seems like the end of the world for someone if you have to go to prison. But, you know, after talking to other people, and, and what I did was uh, I actually went to an AA meeting here um, about three months ago just yeah, to see what it was good. like yeah and you know i i went there and and just basically told him that i had never been to an aa meeting i wanted to know what a, yeah you know i know i know other people you know went but you know i was i i did have a a very nice in fact they took me out to coffee afterwards and they're like <laughs> that's awesome yeah you know they're, they're telling me that you know you know, uh, you know, basically helping me along as well, telling me, you know, why I shouldn't enable. Yeah. You know? it's, a, it's a great, it's a great fellowship, a great community. Um, you know, I'm still involved in AA myself and also uh, occasionally, but more uh, with Celebrate Recovery now. And Celebrate Recovery is a faith-based 12-step at, you know, they have it at churches all around too. You got Narcotics Anonymous, um, you got refuge recovery, which is a Buddhist space. I mean, you got all kinds of different options out there. And um, I think with all of them, that community is so strong. And it sounds like uh, you got a taste of that. <laughs> Are you there, Stephanie? Are you there? Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. I, lo I lost you for one second. <laughs> um, but no, I agree with you. And, and the, the other thing is, is that, um, you know, like when, when Tyler applied to, um, basically come out here where he could switch states uh so that he doesn't have to get out you know when he gets out he still is waiting for the parole office here to sign all the official paperwork and send it back and and they will because yeah. i've met with the parole office but um you know under normal circumstances you know they just open the doors and let people out and they even if they have no place to go and 
so you know like i did go uh, uh meet with his his uh, parole officer here that is in charge of deciding whether tyler can come here and and you know he he has all the plans to do that but he had to visit with me and i went and visited with him and he himself is in recovery and mm. you know he's he's actually a, a young man he's he's under 30 years old and you know he told me that you know that's it's one of the best AA fellowships and NA, I guess. There's a lot yeah. of people in both that um, he's ever seen. And he said that's part of the reason why he transferred over here. Really? Are, um, are, are you familiar with uh, Al-Anon, Stephanie? Al-Anon. Yes, uh, I, Al-Anon? I am. Okay, cool. So, so, I mean, you know that you have that option as well, because, and I just wanted to, to mention that for, you know, for you, for myself, for everyone out there listening, that a lot of the time, you know, the loved ones, you know, they, they tend to get uh, the back seat of the treatment. I kind of put that in quotes or whatever, because of they're not the, you know, the immediate one with the issue. But at the same time, the effects of that are sometimes just as great for our loved ones, for our spouses, our, our moms, our dads, um, you know, family members, friends. And so a program like Al-Anon is, is really a great spot where, and, and same with Celebrate Recovery as well, because you have, they, they kind of allow everybody in at the same time too where, um, you know, you get to work on your own things, you get to learn about the addiction, you know, the, the addict's mind, like how that works, how it affects the family. Uh, such an important uh, spot. I just wanted to point that out, um, you know, for those out there listening, if anyone says, well, yeah, you know, I do have a, a son or a, a daughter or a friend or somebody. I mean, there, there's, there's programs, there's um, resources out there for you as well, because, you know, not None of us know how to deal with this stuff if we don't have, um, you know, other people around us helping us through these types of things. Um, I wanted to say, I, to you, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to tell you that I agree, and I, I have had people talk to me about Al-Anon, and I actually have a sister-in-law that goes to Al-Anon, and she was talking to me, and she's married to my brother, who, you know, spent years being an alcoholic, and now he's he's been clean for years now. A totally changed man. Um, and well, that's so, great that Tyler has him too, right? I mean, will, will they be able to be in contact, his uncle and him? Yeah, and actually his uncle tried to help him several times. But, you know, I guess until Tyler was ready, you yeah. know, he, yeah. it just doesn't work. It, it doesn't. It really doesn't. He's got to be ready for it. And, um, you know, that, that's, that's, uh, that's the big thing. You know, I could tell – I have a loved one myself who is still struggling out there, and I could tell him till I'm blue in the face about what he should do, what he needs to do, what he can do. Here's the resources. But if he's not ready, he's just not – you know, it's not going to work. It definitely doesn't work because <laughs> I've <laughs> talked blue in the face. Yeah. Like I said, you know, I have other children too that went through the same party and periods when they were young and stuff like that. But, you know, they, they don't seem to have the struggle – and yeah. you know, like, I mean, the the my set, my third oldest son, he he uh, just gave me a grand a grandson, and I'm very oh, proud congratulations. of that. But, yeah. but he he was, I mean, I I thought for sure that he and Tyler would follow each other, you know, he'd follow Tyler straight like that, you know. But he just suddenly changed his life and moved away from his friends, and the next thing I know, you know, he's like, I don't even drink anymore, mom. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, wow. well, that's amazing. <laughs> you know, what? So, how, how many? How many years uh, sober? Do you said your brother has a couple or a few? Oh, he's definitely got at least fifteen years. Oh now. wow. Okay, and does he do uh, like a? He does AA or recovery program? Um, as far as I know, he still does. Yeah. I know that when he first cleaned up, that he he went to like meetings every single yeah. day. What's what's but, his name? If you don't mind me asking, Uncle what? Yeah, Uncle Gary. Okay, Uncle Gary. All right, so Tyler, I just got a message for you, man. I don't care if you like Uncle Gary or you don't like him or whatever. You don't have to like him, but dude's got some experience. He's got, you know, he's right in, he's in your family, and it sounds like he knows what the hell's going on with the recovery program. So take some advice from him and, and do what he says. That's that's That would be my one piece of advice to start with. I mean, I think that's huge that he already has a resource in Uncle Gary who's already there, who's already been through it. Um, it really is just about showing up and letting our ego down, letting the pride down and just being okay with having somebody else kind of guide us and, and tell us what to do at least for the first, you know, uh, three, six months to a year. So I just yeah. wanted to sh- shoot that little message out there, man. That comes from a place of love, no doubt. 
And you know, the thing is, is, is no matter what road Tyler ever went down, you know, his uncle has always, you know, tried to um, talk to him and help him and stuff. But, you know, he's also made me realize as well. Uh, lost you there. Oh, that, you know, there you tell Tyler's ready to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You there? Oh, it's getting a. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, My okay. It just cut out. It just cut out for a second. I think we're okay though. Well, no, and I, th I think this is probably a good spot to, uh, to, to kind of start wrapping this up anyways. And I appreciate your time today and thank you for sharing, uh, you know, uh, about your thoughts and then Tyler's uh, story and what he's going through. So I know that one of the, one of the, uh, things too, that you are, um, that you're trying to do is to help get Tyler home from Missouri back to uh, Virginia. So um, you've set up a Fundly uh, account. And so we're going to put that link in, in the show notes. And um, you know, I, I think the, the biggest thing just to start, if we put a starting point point on it is Tyler needs an, a, an Amtrak ticket or uh, some sort of transportation to get back. And I think that's a good place to start. If you'd like to contribute to that, uh, and help get Tyler back home, get him back on his feet, and get going into some some recovery programs. Um, like I said, we'll put the link in there. But Stephanie, where can people do that at? And if you want to talk a little bit about that, feel free. Okay, um, I did create um, a, a page on Fundly. It's F U N D like funds, Fundly dot com, and it's a forward slash help recovering prisoner get home. And what I do is I started a page where people can donate that way when he gets out here. And yes, I mean, I'm trying to do what I can as well financially. But like I said, I have other kids that I try to help as well and try to keep my own lights on and all that. And But, you know, I'm trying to raise money for him so that he can come out here and he'll be able to um, find, find a place so we can get him a train ticket. Um, the prison that he's at, you know, they'll take him to the train station that's as far as they'll get they'll they'll get him in which is in kansas city i think that's an hour and a half from where he's at but you know he um he definitely needs help so that he can um, get his life set up where he can you know get 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 an apartment you know get a couch and you know some clothes um and i'm trying to help him as much as i can as well and you know i i know that his family you know, uh, there's some family members that are willing to help him, but there's a lot of family members that are not willing to help him because of the destruction that he's done. And so he needs to, you know, make amends for that somehow to those people. But yes, if you can contribute, um, if you could go to fundly.com and it's help recovering prisoner get home and his name is Tyler. And, um, so you can go there and you can make a donation and and I would really appreciate that. The money is going to help purchase um, you know, a train or bus ticket as well as try to help him um get into um someplace. And like I said, he can stay here for a few days, at, you know, as a launch pad, but um under my conditions where I live, you know, he has to have his his own place and and of course, you know, within, um, you know, a decent distance from where he's offered a job at. So, um, and, and he's got a ways to go yet, you know, he's got to yeah. be able to get a car and all that stuff, but first he's got to stay in recovery and, and go through the process of, you know, the, what, what he has to do, I guess, to, um, yeah. make that yeah. legally right so that he can get, obtain, you know, a hardship license. And he'll, he'll do all that. He talks about it all the time. He, he's planning on doing it all, but you know, it's just a matter of trying to get him, uh, you know, some help. Well, I, one, one of my favorite quotes is by Mike Tyson. He said, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And so, and the only reason I bring that up here is because um, having a recovery community, uh, a, a sponsor, um, people around us, because I, I guarantee, and it's it's happened to me many a times, and in, in I've been sober for five years now, and it continues to. That, you know, we all have certain days when when life punches you in the mouth, and when I have something to to turn back on, to fall back on. I mean, 
uh, call my sponsor, get to a meeting. That, I mean, that's, that's really the crucial point of where it's at. So, um, and, and I love the, the tenacity sounds like he's, you know, he's, he's really motivated to, uh, uh, to get back on track, get it, put his life back together. And I would just say, um, you know, patience is, is a big thing. And like they say in the rooms, one of the, the cliche things, I hate it, but I love it at the same time. It's one day at a time. So I'm just trying to put one foot in front of the other, do the next right thing. And, and all that stuff kind of falls into place. So uh, I really wish you the best. I wish Tyler the best. And uh, like I said, when, when we, uh, when we disconnect, I will uh, make sure to get you my phone number. Now, if you, if you don't mind passing it on to Tyler and if, you know, if he needs to ask a question or looking for resources or just needs to chat, whatever the heck I'm, I'm always here and willing to, uh, to help with that too, Stephanie. So thank yeah, you so thank much. You. Again. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I really appreciate you listening and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I could talk about, you know, the effects of alcoholism that's happened and because it is, it is a devastating thing. And, you know, I mean, there are people in this world that, you know, they can drink responsibly and not have a problem with it, but then there are people that just can't drink. I mean, it, yeah. it's just such, it's like, it's so life shattering for them, you know, and, yeah. and there's a lot of people like that and it's sad, you know, and, and I don't want to see him ever go down that road again as his mom. But I also know too, that, you know, and I have, I have a great amount of respect for him because of the fact that, you know, he, he does want to come out and just pick up his life and move on. And he knows that he's got to stay clean. And, you know, he talks about, I like, I really like the fact that he is in, in, um, you know, he, he does have somebody that he is communicating with out here already. Yeah. That's awesome. That, yeah. And that's offered him a job and that, that is a huge you know, like that's something to really look forward to that he's looking forward to just because he feels like he already has someone, you know, to talk to. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, I know that I looked it up online. There's plenty, there's, there's thousands of meetings all over the place around here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I live right across the Potomac river in West Virginia, but right across the Potomac river is Maryland. And there's a city over there in Cumberland, Maryland, and they have lots and lots of, of meetings as well. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's good stuff. And you, you know, you know, you, you experienced it firsthand, that community. Oh, Hey, you're new. Let me take you out and buy you a cup of coffee and we'll just chat. You know I mean? That, <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of cool stuff that, that's, that you get to deal with, you know, that's, uh, um, it, it really is a fellowship. It really is a community and people really do care. So it's, it's a pretty neat thing to be a part of. Well, thank you so much, Shane, and thank you for your audience that is listening, and I wish everybody well and, and hope everybody also stays in recovery that are listening to your program, and I think it's a great thing that you've done, and I, I just find it fascinating, you know, to be able to um, get on the radio and, and talk, you know, about your life and the things that have, you've done and things that have happened to you and, and share those experiences because it is important when you find out that there are other people in your situation. Absolutely. And that's what it's about talking about it and getting it out there. Um, so thank you again, Stephanie. I appreciate you coming on uh, one more time, guys. If you want to help Tyler uh, get home and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and get back on track, if you go to fundly.com, that's F U N D L L Y.com uh, slash help recovering prisoner, get home. Uh, you can uh, you can do that there, and I'll also be sure to put that in the show notes. Stephanie, it's been great to talk to you, and uh, I hope to uh, chat with you again sometime. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Shane. Be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com. Uh, you can also connect with us on Instagram, at realthatsoberguy, and on Twitter, at Shane Raymer. Uh, thanks again to Foundations Recovery Network. Uh, if you need to reach out for help, you can do that at foundationsrecovery.com slash sober guy. You can always also call 833-81-SOBER. If you need some help, you want to ask some questions, uh, you can do that there. And then also, uh, we've got the live show coming up January 20th with uh, special guest Darren Trent, Brandon Novak, and John Henson. Uh, go to that sober guy.com slash live shows for tickets or to improv.com slash Hollywood and get some tickets there too. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Peace, love, and respect. Uh, good things to come in 2019. Keep your blood clean. But I know what you do in the back room. And you still say that I don't know. Hey,
anything about you. Oh, I don't know anything about you. But I know what you're doing about you. 